Okay. Morning. Um, so we were talking about the DNA viruses, and this morning I'm going to switch and talk about RNA virus strategies. Uh, but before I do that, are there any questions on the DNA virus stuff I talked about? Okay. So the RNA virus strategies are somewhat different because the RNA viruses have got different strengths and weaknesses as opposed to the DNA viruses when it comes to parasitizing the host cell. And so, again, I want to go into a little bit of an overview of these before we actually go into the details of individual virus families. Uh, so, if we take viruses, that RNA viruses that are going to stay as RNA all the time, because some of them go through a DNA phase, those are the retroviruses, the rest of them stay as RNA for their entire life cycle, uh, and I want to talk about these. Uh, so if you take an RNA virus that is going to copy itself at the RNA state, at the RNA level, all of this copying is just going to be the same as you have with DNA. The one strand of DNA is copied into the complementary strand, and then that is copied back into the original sense strand. So if we were to arbitrarily call one of those Watson and Crick, Watson's copied to Crick, Crick is copied to Watson. Uh, but if this is all happening at the at RNA level, then what you need is an RNA polymerase which copies RNA. So those are known as RNA-dependent RNA polymerases. And if they're going to DNA, then you'll need an RNA-dependent DNA polymerase to copy that into DNA. And that's what's known as reverse transcriptase because normal transcription in the cell is copying DNA into RNA. So this is the reverse of that, copying RNA into DNA. And the point I want to make about both of those is that our cells, at least, uh, do not seem to provide either a DNA-dependent RNA polymerase or an RNA-dependent polymerase because we do DNA to RNA. We don't do RNA to DNA. We don't do RNA to RNA. So our polymerase, our RNA polymerase, is of no use uh, to these RNA viruses because it doesn't use RNA as a template. So what that means is all of the animal RNA viruses since they don't have, we don't provide them with anything that will copy RNA, have to code for an RNA-dependent polymerase to copy their RNA into something else. Uh, <coughs> so all of these RNA viruses that we're going to talk about are going to have to code for their own RNA polymerase because we don't provide it. So... Number one thing is every one of these is going to have to have a gene coding for a polymerase. So we have to take that as a set thing, but there are some other aspects of this polymerase activity that we need to think of. Uh, and for that, that's going to depend on the kind of RNA that these viruses package. So let me just take these one step at a time. Uh, some of these viruses package single-strand RNA some of these RNA viruses. So if you package single-strand RNA into your virus particle, if it's the same sense as message, which is by definition positive sense, that's what we mean by positive sense RNA when we're talking about these viruses, if it's the same sense as message, then it has, when it gets into the cell, it can be immediately translated into protein. So, this virus has to code for an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase because we don't provide one. Uh, but it can make it once it gets into the cell because it puts the message into the cell. This is translated into proteins, and one of those proteins will be the virally coded RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So for the plus strands, it's pretty easy. But when it comes to the negative strands, you have a bit more of a problem because they're putting in an rna which is the opposite sense to message. So this has to be copied into message sense before it can be made into proteins. So this needs the RNA polymerase as the very first thing when it gets into the cell to make its messages. And it can't make the RNA polymerase in the cell unless it, uh, before it's made messages. So where is the RNA polymerase going to come from to do this very first step? And the answer is for the negative sense viruses, it has to take the RNA polymerase in with it. 
So this is somewhat similar to the vaccinia situation we talked about yesterday. So since it will need that RNA polymerase as soon as it gets into the cell in order to make messages, and it can't make any protein until it's made messages, it needs to package this RNA polymerase in the virus particle. So what we have for the negative sense RNA viruses is they, they code just like all of these viruses. They code for an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, but in this case, it's in the virus particle. So it was made in the previous round of infection. So the RNA polymerase must be packaged in the virion. And if it's going to modify this message by capping and methylating it at the 5' end or by polyadenylating it at the 3' end, it needs to include the RNA modifying enzymes in the virus particle as well so that the first messages it makes look like authentic messages. And that is the case for these viruses. Um, not all of them do provide the modification machinery. You'll see a few exceptions as we go through. Um, but one thing is, if you don't provide capping, methylating, and polyadenylating enzymes, uh, they're there for a purpose. The, those modifications on the RNA are there for various purposes. Uh, but some of those purposes are important in efficient translation and instability of the messages. And so if you don't cap or model cap or methylate or polyadenylate. You have to do something extra to these messages so that the protein translation system recognizes them efficiently uh, and also so that they're reasonably stable. So you can't just ignore the rules. If you don't do these things, you tend to have to do something else to make up for the fact that you didn't do this. So in a way, you don't win anyway. Uh, so, but, and we'll see some of the things that some of these viruses do to make up for the fact that they don't cap or methylate. 